All right, so we're going to discuss heat capacities in this video. And we're already familiar with the idea of specific heat from the previous chapter. However, we're going to look at them from a slightly different angle. So we know that work equals the change in kinetic energy. And work and heat are very similar to each other, where work is the change in mechanical energy, heat is the change in thermal energy. And we're going to relate that th change in thermal energy to a change in kinetic energy, very similar to the work energy theorem. So we're going to say that the change in kinetic energy is equal to the heat. And we're going to plug in our equation that we learned in a previous video for the translational kinetic energy, 3 halves n r, and I'm replacing it with delta t because we're doing the change in kinetic energy. Everything else, the 3 halves, the n, and the r are all constants for that particular scenario. And that's going to equal the heat, where we're going to say heat is equal to number of moles times the molar specific heat times the change in temperature. So this was one of the forms of the heat equation that we learned in the previous chapter. All right, so you can see right away there's some variables that we can cancel out, the n's and the delta t's. So we can see that 3 halves times the ideal gas constant equals the molar specific heat. So remember, this is molar specific heat. And we're actually going to call this molar specific heat a constant volume. We'll discuss molar specific heat a constant pressure in a future topic. Now you have to remember where this 3 came from, this 3 here. Remember this was from your x, y, z motion because it was translational. So the number on top of the fraction comes from the different types of movement that you can have. So in this particular scenario, when the molar specific heat at constant volume equals 3 halves times the ideal gas constant, that means you can only move the gas molecules are only moving the x, y, and z direction. There's no rotational kinetic energy. There's no vibration of the bonds. It's just that the molecule is moving at, in the x, y, z direction. And this goes along with being a monatomic gas. When you start adding in rotational motion, that's when you have a diatomic gas. And in your textbook, you're also told that for a monatomic solid, this is your relationship. Now remember, this 3 is really 6 divided by 2. So our relationship here is that the molar specific heat at constant volume is equal to the degrees of freedom, so the different ways it can move or get kinetic energy, divided by 2 times the ideal gas constant. And remember, this is going to be molar specific heat because the ideal gas constant is in joules per mole Kelvin. So there's mole in here, there are not kilograms. Now we're going to do a little bit of work with looking at the specific heats in kilograms given in your textbook and translating them into molar specific heats and then seeing what the degrees of freedom are. And we're going to find out it doesn't usually work out quite as evenly as this because there are actually partial modes of degrees of freedom. And because of that, you don't always get a nice even number like 3R. You might get 6.5R. So keep that in mind as you're working with specific heats that there are something called partial uh, modes of degrees of freedom.